Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in to this video. I'm Dr. Loyal Zubi and I am going to present in this video a review of chapter one of the biomedical instrumentation class. So question number one says which of the following is the equivalent to the unit of current, which is the ampere. Uh, ampere. Uh, and so is it a column per meter? Uh, or columns per volt or columns per second or columns per meter square. So the answer for this question is actually number C, it's column per second because the current is the rate of change of um, charges per unit time. So that is um, the correct answer uh, that we are looking for for this question. Now for question two, which of the following is the equivalent of the unit of volt? Um, which is the unit to measuring of um, electrical potential. So the unit of volt actually it's the um, energy um, uh, um, energy consumption um, per charge uh, passing through um, you know um, a wire or a connector. So this is the answer for this is B, which is joules per columns. Uh, so that is the answer that we're looking for actually here. Uh, now uh, for question number three, according to Kirchhoff's current law, the sum of the current entering a node equals to zero. Is this true or false? Um, it is uh, actually uh, false because it should be the net uh, current entering a, zero e a node equals to zero, not the sum of currents uh, entering a node equals to zero. That, so that is a false uh, statement. So if we go to the next uh, question, so number four, the resistance is directly proportional to resistivity. Uh, that's number four. That is true. Uh, remember that R equals rho L over the cross-sectional area. So the resistivity is rho. And so the resistance equal rho multiplied by the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. And remember that the... Um, Resistivity is a material property. Uh, so the answer for number four is true. Now, number five, how many alternative opera uh, operational modes are used are used uh, in medical instrumentations? Uh, how many alternative operational modes are used in medical instrumentation? And if you go back to the content that we had in the class, you will see that we have five operational mode. One of them is, you know, direct and indirect and continuous and, um, you know, discrete. Um, so these are, you can go back to the uh, uh, lecture and you can check those uh, five uh, alternative mode. Uh, so the answer is C. Now, number six, which of the following requires a power supply? So uh, a photoconductive cell, a photovoltaic, take cell both a and b uh, nor a uh, neither a or nor b uh, is that the one that we are looking at actually so it should be neither a nor b so number six actually is the photoconductive cell because in the photoconductive cell it's um, modulated uh, device which means that it has the um, uh, measurement is affecting the power that is supplied to the photoconductive uh, cell and that's how we do the measurement. So six, the answer to it is A. Correct. Now, number seven, uh, which is the range of measurable, uh, which is the range of measurable potential in biomedical signal? Uh, so in medical signals, one of the challenges is that they are small in uh, value. So uh, seven, the answer is between microvolts and millivolts. Uh, and that's why we need a lot of operation amplifier and, and the magnif we need to magnify the signals. So seven is B. All right, now if we move to eight, which of the following is not as de desirable static characteristic? And this is if you're looking to compare uh, medical devices or medical instruments uh, between each other, you know, we, we talked about static and dynamic characteristics. So which of the following is not a desirable um, static characteristic? And this here, it is the drift. And um, if you go to the content of the lecture, you can see that drift is, is actually um, a, an undesirable, um, you know, characteristic uh, of, you know, operating an instrument or a medical instrument in DC. 
because we keep moving you keep moving away from the values that we, we want to measure and if you do for example if you're trying if you have an accelerometer data and you want to integrate it once or twice with the drift your integration is going to be um, is going to be different from the values that you're looking for so that's a big challenge in um, you know operating a medical instrument in the dc range or the low frequency range so if we go to the next question which of the following is usually the same across the available uh, range and in this one here um it's you remember we we talked about accuracy of reading and accuracy of full range of full scale accuracy accuracy of reading it's you will have different accuracies depending on the range that you're measuring for example if i have a device that's measure voltage between 0 and 100 millivolt uh, we could have accuracy between 0 and 10 millivolt and then accuracy between 10 and 50 millivolts uh, and then between 50 and 100 millivolts so you'll have different readings so that's what we call different uh, percent accuracy accuracy of reading but the one that we have a value of accuracy uh, for the full scale is B actually so the answer here is B now number 10 high precision measurements uh, imply high accuracy uh, is this true or false oh it's a false statement that does not mean um, that if high precision high precision does not mean high accuracy so that's a false statement and um, the other question, the second question, 11, systemic errors or biases in a measurement can be removed, 11, and that is actually true. Uh, and we can remove them in two ways, doing a cal calibration, uh, and also you, another way you can do um, setting up uh, values and, you know, calibration is the most important one that we use in order to uh, remove uh, errors uh, and or biases. 12. When were the three classes uh, of medical devices uh, defined and regulated? Uh, this actually was, <coughs> sorry, in 1976, uh, when we have the Act uh, of Medical Devices uh, for, for the Food and Drug Administration. So that is uh, number 12, and it's 1976. Uh, prior to 1976, there was little uh, actually regulation uh, over medical devices. Now, 13, how many critical criteria, sorry, how many criteria need to be satisfied to regulate a device as a medical device? And 13, we are going to have three uh, criteria and needed to be satisfied to regulate a, a device as a medical device. And that is related to the intent of use, um, the, how it is going to be uh, used and if it is uh, registered in a, reg a special registry. So we have three um, criteria need to be satisfied and you can check the lecture t to know more about these. So uh, you need to make sure that a medical device is um, registered in the special registry uh, and also that the intent of use is to um, heal or improve the health uh, subject and how it's going to be affecting the body uh, so it should not be metabolized that's that's one of the key things and it should not be uh, working you know acting as a chemical reaction or affect you know create chemical reaction um, so there's a lot of things into con to consider you can check the lecture and you get more information in that now number 14 which of the following medical device category is subject to general control actually in this uh, 14 all of them class 1 2 and 3 should uh, devices should medical devices should be subject to general controls and that is the correct answer now if you go to 15 which of the following medical device category is life sustaining but not life threatening and remember we talked in that about this in the class we said that class 1 is life sustaining uh, sorry non life sustaining non life threatening and has the least control a uh, class 2 is life sustaining uh, is not life sustaining but it's life threatening if it fails and class three is life-sustaining and also it's life-threatening if it fails. So which one life-sustaining but not life-threatening? Um, life-sustaining uh, but not life-threatening and 15. And if you check that, this should be life-sustaining, not life-threatening. Um, this could be, this is should, this should be class three because uh, if it's life-sustaining, 
uh, and also it should not be life threatening because it fails it should be it will be life threatening which is the opposite of that and that is class 3 medical devices now 16 which of the following medical device could be subject to pre-market approval pre-market approval is the re most rigorous um, approval process uh, and it is used when you have a device or a technology that has not been proven before so which of the following medical category could be subject um, to that uh, and here we that could be it's n it's not um, a, a must and here we can say that it is class 2 uh, class 3 it's a must to be it has to be subject to pre-market approval but because we have could be that could be that could be class class 2 uh, if it's categorized this way so I hope this is a, a quick review that is helpful quick review about um, the content of chapter 1 uh, we have more you have more information in the lectures uh, and uh, please refer to them uh, before preparing yourself to the exam I uh, thank you for watching until the next video bye